myself through so the athletic, the athletic sorry. <laughs> what stood out the way, especially defensively, you guys um, handled the honest? Uh, I mean, I don't know if handled's the handled, word, yeah. right? We gave up. Um, but I thought everybody competed, and, you know, his buckets were tough buckets. Um, you know, I, I mean, he's one of the most forceful, if not the most forceful player in our league. Um, and like I've said it before, like, he's built for the way the rules are. Um, you know, he's extremely difficult to stop, but I thought we did a good job of challenging, contesting. You know, we tried to take charges on him. Um, you know, but what we did, I thought, you know, we eliminated other people. And, you know, that's when they're at their best is when he's attack minded uh, and then everybody else is contributing too. And I thought we did a great job of uh, taking the other guys out of the game. That first half, um, it seemed like there was a lot of, a lot of energy from the get-go. Um, in the second half, what did you see of the way that you guys battled through that as they made their runs and just kind of and were able to pull this one out? Yeah, I, I thought we held our poise. Um, you know, they're a championship team, right? They're, they're not going to give in. They're going to make their runs. Um, I think in the past, you know, we haven't been able to sustain their runs. Uh, tonight, I think, was a great step for us. Uh, we showed a lot of poise. We kept our composure. Um, but, you know, the thing that you know, was most impressive to me is we continued to do it together. Um, there was no splintering. There was not one guy trying to do it on his own. Uh, we just went back to the basics and executed our stuff and got the looks we wanted. Building off of that with the, t the togetherness, how have you seen that grow um, just throughout the season so far, but just especially as, like, you find these games where they, it is really um, accentuated? Well, I think it's, it's about the trust. Um, you know, when you have a newer group of guys and a young group of guys who are chill, still, you know, exploring who they are, uh, to start the season, people are trying to figure out uh, that trust piece of it. And, you know, I think they're believing in one another and they trust one another to do the right things by each other all the time. You know, we live with some mistakes because that's going to happen. Uh, but when mistakes happen with this group, we don't fold, right? We don't collapse. Uh, we find a way to band together even more. Uh, and that's the trust that you have to have in order to be a successful team. Tom. Uh, Tom, but there's a, you answered a lot of what I was going to ask JB about the poise. Um, in the first half, Evan goes out quick. Kevin comes in and gives you nine real good minutes there. How, how big a lift was that just to kind of get things settled down, what have you? Uh, I mean, I think, you know, he did a great job on both ends. Um, you know, he has the ability, obviously, to make shots, but he can make plays. Um, you know, he rebounds the ball to finish possessions. But again, he's one of our guys that's a spark for us off the bench and can give us that lift. And, you know, when he's hitting threes, you know, the guys feel it uh, and it raises the energy when he's giving those backdoor passes and, you know, creating for other people, the guys feel it. Um, so I think, you know, it's important that we get him involved uh, and continue to keep him involved. Always only gain through experience. Yeah, you have to understand what you're facing, you know, in order to understand how to react. Um, and until you go through it enough, uh, you don't know what it is. And you don't know, you know, individually and collectively, you know, how do you get through it and get to the next step until somebody punches you in the face. Um, and then you got to respond. I thought we did a great job of responding tonight. Chris. Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. Hey, JB. What's up, Chris? We talked a lot pregame about Drew Holiday, his defense, Brooke Lopez's defense. But Jared Allen is in that conversation as well. What makes him such an impactful defender for you guys? Um, he, he can do everything on that end of the floor. Um, he's an elite rim protector. He's a shot blocker. Um, you know, he can defend the pick and roll. He can switch and guard smaller guys. Um, you know, he can guard big guys. Um, you know, we've used him to chase guys off the three-point line. It's just his ability to do so many different things. And it's also that goes back to the trust that everybody has in him. Like they know he's going to be there to have their back. So it allows our defense to function, you know, at the level that it's capable of because we know and the guys know that Jared's going to be there to protect them. Why do you think he doesn't get the same level of recognition as some of his peers? Uh, I think it's, you know, he's not as public about who he is and what he's looking for. Uh, every day he just goes out and does his job. You know, I don't know, um, you know, how many TV commercials he has and, you know, social media and all that stuff. Um, but I think he plays a type of basketball that, I mean, it's not flashy. It's not pretty. Um, you know, they won't give him his own sneaker deal. But we know how important he is. And if you watch, and I think that's the tough part about it is, you know, a lot of people don't watch the game, you know, as they say they do. 
Um, because if you watch the game, and this isn't just this year, like to me, there's no way last year he wasn't on an all defensive team. Um, but if you watch the game, like you understand how impactful he is. You know, last year we had like one national TV game or something. Um, so people weren't watching him. And you got to study a guy like him to understand how valuable he is. Mm-hmm. Spence. Spencer Davis, basketballs.com. On the offensive end, it looked like he was available in the pocket all night. Um, going back to that vertical spacing conversation that we had before, um, opening things up for Darius and Donovan, you can get the pull up and you can get the runners there on the right side. Just how much does that make it easier on your offense to kind of, you know, going forward? Well, I mean, he's, I mean, obviously he's a threat and teams have to make decisions, um, what they're willing to live with. You know, Milwaukee is one of the teams that they try to bait you into a bunch of, you know, mid-range shots or floaters uh, by keeping that big in the drop, you know. Um, we're lucky that our guys are capable of making those shots at an elite level. And, you know, he can make that little shot in the pocket. Our ball handlers can make the pull-ups, you know, at a high clip. Um, so, you know, again, it's going to force them to make some sort of adjustments. And I think we saw that late, and then we have to be prepared for the adjustments. And then third straight start for Isaac and knocked down a couple early. Uh, but the one that stood out to me was uh, the one where he pump faked and put it on the floor and found a teammate. Just having the threat of him shooting from the corner, um, what does that do just for kind of the wrinkles that you can throw in? Well, I mean, it obviously helps your spacing. Um, but Isaac's a really good basketball player. And I think, you know, we've asked him to be in a specific role, but Isaac is good with the ball in his hands. You know, he's good at attacking closeouts. Uh, he's a really good passer. I think it's just, you know, he's accepted a role for the greater good of the team, um, you know, where the ball's not in his hands as much, uh, obviously because of the guys that we have around him. But Isaac's a really good basketball player, and he's capable of making all types of plays. Danny. Danny Cunningham, ESPN Cleveland. JB, what made Donovan so good tonight despite maybe having a bit of an off night shooting the ball? Uh, I mean, he didn't quit, and he understood how to get himself to the free throw line to get himself going. Um, you know, a lot of times, in, you know, Milwaukee in the past against us has upped their physicality, and, you know, we've kind of backtracked a little bit. I thought tonight, through their physicality, he kept attacking and keep getting downhill uh, and got 16 free throws. You know, I don't know if he's had... Um, that many free throws this year for us, but um, you know when they're going to be physical, you got to stay attack minded. And I think he did that tonight. I don't know if you got the thumbs up from the bench on the challenge or not before you signaled to challenge it. But in that moment, how much trust do you have on the guy that was involved in the play, where Kevin was pretty adamant that he wanted you to make them take a look at that ball? Uh, each guy is different, <laughs> um, you know. But again, you know, Kevin doesn't ask for it much, um, so it was, you know take a gamble with him, and he's one of the guys that I'll gamble with all the time. Joji, uh, Joji has that count. Coach, you talked pregame about uh, what a tough matchup Brook Lopez was. And he's already uh, had a big game against us this year. What did you guys do against him tonight? To- I think we, we got him off the three-point line. Um, you know, he's hurt us in the past, you know, in the pick-and-roll game and out in space uh, by knocking down threes. Um, you know, we held him. He just got three of them tonight. Uh, you know, he made a couple of them, but, you know, normally in the past he's gotten up, you know, six, seven, eight, and that's been uh, deadly for us because now we're stretched out more. We're worried about his three, and then Giannis can go create and do what he needs to do. So I think, you know, getting him off that three-point line was huge. John, John Miller, Sports Illustrated Media Group. Coach, um, with the way that you guys have played at home this year, um, did you maybe have a different level of comfort or confidence coming into this one, knowing that you had them on your home floor? You can kind of flush the other two. Yeah, I mean, you, you learn from the other two. Um, but again, our guys have fed off our crowd all year long. So the difference is, you know, in moments where, you know, there is a little adversity, you know, you've got this crowd behind us and we've got our fans behind us. And I thought that was huge for us. You know, when you're on the road and sometimes you can be searching for that energy, it's harder. Um, but having our fans behind us, you know, every single time something happened, you know, our crowd got behind us and got us going. And that's the momentum that we've been feeding off all year. Last one, Chris. JB, you said before the game that you wanted to give Milwaukee your best punch. Do you feel this qualifies? Um, hopefully we got more in the tank. You know, I thought we played well. Again, you know, the third quarter, our defense, I thought we gave up a little too much. Um, but, you know, it's a step in the right direction. And our job is to continue to improve. And I hope that this isn't our best game of the season um, because we do have room to grow, and I expect us to continue to grow.